Hi guys! Welcome to learn English with M to the power of 3! In today's lesson, we will learn and practice English with... Ladies and gentlemen, let's take it from the top! Only Murders in the Building Season 3 Mabel, Charles and Oliver are back in the murder podcasting game investigating the sudden collapse of Paul Rudd's character, Ben at the debut of Oliver's Broadway play. So if you haven't already done so, be sure to hit the like bell and subscribe buttons on this video so you never miss out on any of our future lessons. Let's start. Number one, how far would you go? Number two, hang on to something. Let's watch. Oh, how far would you oh, yeah. go to hang on to it? Oh, oh, thank you. How far would you go? It's asking how much you're willing to do to get something or achieve a goal. It's like asking, how much effort are you ready to put in? Let's watch some examples. So you would do anything for Damon and Enzo? Like anything, anything? I mean, how far would you really go? How far would you go to get what you came in all this way for? How far would you go to help your fellow man? I needed to know how far you would go. Hang on to something. It means to hold on to it tightly, like when you hold a handle so you don't drop it. It can also mean not letting go of ideas or things that are important to you. Let's watch some examples. And I know I may not love you the way you love me, but I do love you. Isn't that worth hanging on to? I have no choice but to confront her. Don't do that. You've got gold here. Hang on to it until you're in trouble and then throw it in her face. Hang on to the job. Flip a few houses. Get my feet wet. You hang on to it for a minute. I trust you. A big lie gives you something to hang on to. Trouble starts when you shave the truth and it just gets all twisted up. Now let's review that scene. Oh. How far would you oh, yeah. go to hang on to it? Oh. oh, thank you. Number three, sort somebody or something out. Let's watch. Well, we'll just sort all this out. I really don't think people are in a party mood right now. Just do it. Sort something out. It's an idiomatic expression in English. It means to handle, manage, or resolve a situation, problem, or issue. Sort somebody out. It means to help someone with their problems or make things better for them. Let's watch some examples. I don't have this necklace. Well, then I suppose we should pay Bashir the visit. Sort this whole mess out, yes? We'll sort this out when I return. You yeah, must well, we'll sort you out. Let's we'll sort him out. It takes a clever piece of clockwork to sort it out. Now let's review that scene. Well, we'll just sort all this out. I really don't think people are in a party mood right now. Just do it! Number four, wax poetic. Let's watch. Please wax poetic about how I begged you to be in my play. Wax poetic. It's an idiomatic expression that means talking or writing about something in a very fancy and beautiful way, like a poet. Let's watch some examples. The now Kate's appendix brought us all back here on Christmas Eve of all nights. You're trying to wax poetic on me. She loves to wax poetic about her former acting career. And men just don't wax poetic. Well. These topics are to be researched until you can wax poetic on them for two minutes. Now let's watch that scene again. Please wax poetic about how I begged you to be in my play. Number five. The floor is yours. Let's watch. The floor is yours. Thank you, Howard. The floor is yours. It's an expression that means it's your turn to speak, share your thoughts, or take control of a situation. Let's watch some examples. What do you have to say about that, Betty? 
Go ahead, the floor is yours. Great. The floor is yours. The floor is yours. The floor is yours. The floor is yours, Baudelaire's. Sir Ashley, the floor is yours. Now let's watch that scene again. The floor is yours. Thank you, Howard. Number six, get over oneself. Let's watch. I mean, come on, get over yourselves. Yeah. Right? Get over oneself. It means to stop being self-centered, arrogant, or overly focused on one's own feelings, opinions, or importance, and start considering others. Let's watch some examples. You're jealous. <laughs> of you? Get over yourself. No, but... Wait, don't you trust her? Well, yeah. It's... Then get over yourself. Grow up. I'm a big boy. I'm not traumatized by some random comment from some random woman. I mean, get over yourself. Get over yourself, doofus. We're in business together. Get over yourself, dog. Get over yourself. You really think my grandmother is going to let me marry the whitest girl in all of white? Now let's watch that scene again. I mean, come on, get over yourselves. Yeah. Right? Number seven, morph into... And number eight, save the day. Let's watch. But in the films, I'm just the friendly zoologist who morphs into a 20-foot cobra and helps the cops save the day. Morph into. It means to gradually or smoothly transform or change from one form, state, or character into another. Let's watch some examples. Uh, I'm not skinny, I'm jacked. <laughs> For now, until you morph into your big fat dad. Shut up, my dad's hot! Enid just texted, Thornhill suspicious. How long until he morphs into that thing? I'm not the monster. I was calculating the random motion of virtual particles in a vacuum, when suddenly the particles morphed into an image of Amy's dandruff. Man, show me what other aliens you can morph into. Save the day. It means to fix a big problem or make a difficult situation better, often by doing something heroic or helpful. Let's watch some examples. Knock knock, it's Lucifer, come to save the day. Strangely, it was Lord Boothby who saved the day. The mall just opened. So? So someone could be in range. What do you think, Petey the mall cop is gonna rappel down here and save the day? It doesn't make a difference because they agreed it was in bad taste and now you agree, so Amy saves the day. Woody saves the day again! Now let's watch that scene again. But in the films, I'm just the friendly zoologist who morphs into a 20-foot cobra and helps the cops save the day. Number nine. Train wreck. Let's watch. Everyone was right. He was a train wreck. I fired him three weeks later. Train wreck. Notice that here, W is silent. So, train wreck. Literally, a train wreck is when trains crash into each other. But figuratively, it's often used as a metaphor to describe a situation, event, or performance that is chaotic, disastrous, or completely out of control. Be a train wreck means to be a complete mess or disaster. Let's watch some examples. Everybody loves Pablo. The fun one, but if they knew who he really was, he was a train wreck. Don't worry, there are plenty of jobs that won't consider me a public relations train wreck. There has to be something. The only chance we've got is if Donovan can somehow convince his train wreck of a sister, hell ain't so bad. There he is. Matt! If we don't sell, it's just gonna be a train wreck. Relationships are a train wreck. I can't believe Ted's getting back together with Zoe. I know, they were a total train wreck. <laughs> Unmitigated disaster. Worst couple ever. Now let's watch that scene again. Everyone was right. He was a train wreck. I fired him three weeks later. And number 10? Live on the edge. Let's watch. Hey, there's one thing I know. Is that we're good at living on the edge. Live on the edge. It means to live in a daring and risky way, doing adventurous or bold things. This phrase can also imply a sense of excitement and living life to the fullest, even if it involves some level of risk. Let's watch some examples. Yeah, I'm going to Vermont. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, don't worry about it. Just use your travel insurance. I don't have travel insurance. Well, this is what happens when people live on the edge. Just outside the city, beyond the gates. Away from the water, huh? Wow. He really likes living on the edge. Oh, honey, I live on the edge. She lives on the edge. So how about it? Do you like living on the edge? Now let's watch that scene again. Hey, there's one thing I know. Is that we're good at living on the edge. Alright, now it's time to practice and take the quiz. It has three questions and you have five seconds to answer each. Let's start. Number one, what is the meaning of wax poetic in this context? Maybe I was just waxing poetic. A. Use complex words. B. Talk about everyday things. C. Speak beautifully and creatively. Or D. Explain something scientifically. That's right. The answer is C. So maybe I was just waxing poetic means maybe I was just speaking beautifully and creatively. Number two. What does morph into mean? A. Change into something else. B. Stay the same. C. Shrink in size. Or D. Hide from view. Good job! The correct option is A. So morph into something means to change into something else. Number 3. What does train wreck metaphorically mean? A. A great success. B. A peaceful environment. C. A well-structured plan. Or D. A complete disaster. That's right, the correct option is D. So a train wreck metaphorically means a complete disaster. I'm hoping you got all the questions right. You can comment the name of the movie or TV series that you are interested in and we will create a video based on it. If you find this video helpful, make sure to share it with your friends so they can benefit from it too. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thanks for watching! You can click here to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss out a single video. See you in the next one!